Come along with me into the book of Philippians. Remember, it's not Filipinos, it's Philippians. It comes right after the book of Ephesians, okay? And it's uh, before Revelation. So someplace in there, if you've got a Bible, look it up. You're there. And then, uh, again, if it's on your... Your Bible is as close as your phone away. So if you don't bring your Bible, bring your phone. And then don't go to YouTube and other places. Just go to the Bible. Turn to the book of Philippians. We're going to be in the fourth chapter today. I'm going to pick up where we were uh, last time and read a couple verses. But we're going to finish up the book of Philippians today. Have you enjoyed it? To me, it's a great study book. And, and this is why we come together. I just want to remind you. When we come on a Sunday, we don't come because it's Sunday only. We come because we know we're going to be able to gather together. And the Bible helps us that even as we approach the end of the age, we should gather together more often. So we come to gather together so that we can encourage one another. With friends on stage that are able to sing and help us to be able to worship out of our hearts. Isn't that great? To be able to pray for one another, believe God with one another, interact with one another. But also to receive from God's word because God's word never changes. And it is what gives us life. And so God's word helps us build faith And without faith, we can't please God. So whether you're a young person or an older one that's read the Bible perhaps many times, it still needs to be refreshed each day for us. And we're going to look at that today. And actually, there's two verses we're going to hit today that are often taken out of context. But let let me read for you. We're going to start at verse 8 in Philippians. And uh, this is where we were last week. It says, finally, brethren... Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure or lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue or any praise, what should we do? Think on these things. things. Have you been doing that this week? Have you been thinking about the good things instead of what you see on the news? Mm -hmm. Okay, leave the news alone, okay. And then it it goes beyond that in verse 9. It says, those things which you both learned and received and heard and seen in me, what are we supposed to do? do? Do them. So without faith, without works, our faith don't, doesn't accomplish anything. So we need to do what God tells us. And then let me look at verse number 10. It says, how I praise the Lord for you. Uh, you are concerned with me again, okay? Concerned about me again. Paul's writing to a church in Philippi. I know you've always been concerned for me, but you, you didn't have the chance to help me. This church was unique. It helped all the time. Not that I, I ever was need for, I learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing and on everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation. How many would like the secret of living in every situation? Good and bad. He says this, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or with little. What is that? Help us. What's, what's that secret to living that way? Contentment. Contentment. So Paul learned the secret to contentment. At this time, Paul was under house arrest. His future was looking very bleak. Favor was not upon his life in the natural social sense. But he had learned contentment in the spiritual places. He had taken the things and pressures of life, the stress of life. Imagine the stress he was under. He's under house arrest. The court case was not looking in his favor. The end of his life was coming near, but he says, I have learned to be content. And if Paul in that situation could learn to be content, so can you and I. And you know, I looked up in the dictionary, and contentment is not a state of being happy. It is a state of mind that helps us, let me make sure I say it right, of being satisfied with where you are. Many times in life, we're not satisfied. We are always looking for something else. Maybe I can be this. Maybe I can do that. 
Now, there's nothing wrong with dreaming. There's nothing wrong with stretching your faith to move out into other areas. But if you are not content with where you are, you will never be content no matter where you go. And the whole book of Philippians is about pressing on in the things of God. And God is such an amazing God that he will help us to be content. But at the same time, he will build our faith to draw us to other things, to move us ahead, to places and places where we can make a difference for his kingdom. He is such an amazing God. And this is what Paul was talking about. How, how that contentment in the midst of circumstances. So that means it's not my mind, but it's my inner peace. It's that inner peace that comes and settles inside of me and says, it may not look good around here, but Jesus, I have you. And if I have you, I have all I need because you will take care of me. So it comes down to how well do you know him? Is his life in you your contentment? Or are always you looking for that, that, that silver lining in the cloud above? Are you always looking, if, if I could have parents like them, if I could be in that kind of school, if I could have that kind of job, only if I drove that kind of car, everything would be good. See, sometimes in life, the society tries to mold us. It tries to make us think that these things will make us content. But Paul wants us to understand that no matter where we find ourselves, there can be contentment in life. Amen. You know, next week, um, we're going to have some visitors. And Ann Pretorius is going to be with us. She hasn't been here for a very long time. And Isaac, her son, who's taken over Jam, which is now called For Africa, will be with us to share what's happened over the last couple of years. Because when everything was shut down here, they were still getting food to people in Africa. They were still getting clean water to people and helping people and risking their lives. They didn't have the vaccine over there like we had here. They just had to trust God and do what they could do. And they're going to be here to share. And I think about sometimes where I've been with them in Africa, and we've been out of the school, and dirt floors, some of the classrooms were literally under a tree. That was the classroom. That's all they had. But, you know, those people were happy. There was a contentment in them, in that place. And I can remember being there myself and thinking, how can they be happy and content? But you see, they weren't looking to the outside. They weren't looking for what they could gain. So where is our contentment today? Where do we find our contentment? Do we find it in Jesus? Is he enough for you? That doesn't mean you don't work hard. God says the hand of the diligent is blessed. So we still work hard, and God blesses us. But are we content in that inner man? Because when you have contentment, you have peace. When you have peace, faith rises up. And when faith rises up, God moves you. He's an amazing God. I'm so glad to have uh, Sister Sharon and Daniel and Abigail with us today, visiting from Terrace, B.C. Dr. Roberts, I guess he's working in the hospital. And uh, they went through quite a bit to get where I, they are today. I think Dr. Roberts is online. I trust, oh. I trust he's content <laughs> with his wife and family here. <laughs> but you know, they're one of our families that we've walked with and seen where you know, things weren't looking the way they were supposed to look. But as they hung on to God, and I can remember many times walking over to Walmart, and Sharon would be there as happy as could be. It wasn't the life she expected. But she was con you could see the contentment on her, what Jesus was doing in her life. So I ask you today, 
Where is the contentment from Jesus in your heart, in the life he's given you, in where you are today? Maybe there's struggles around you right now. Are you able to draw on his contentment, knowing that he will lead you? He will never leave you, but he will help you as you draw on his contentment, as you let that peace of God that passes all understanding guard your heart and mind, that he will lead you, and he will even give you God ideas to deal with the situation. He will give you God ideas that will move you from where you are, that natural knowledge will go beyond. I tell you, we serve an amazing God. Faith will always rise up where contentment is found. Amen. Paul was there in the midst of trials. The Bible says he was hungry sometimes. This is Paul, the man that was high up in the Romans at one time. He was a man that was used to living in luxury. But yet, as he served Jesus, everything didn't always go well. Some people think that if they accept Jesus, they're going to have a life of blessing. But you see, when we accept Jesus, life doesn't change to just be an easy road. Life changes so that we are an example to others, that no matter what we face, his life is there to strengthen us. His life is there to let that contentment rise so the peace overtakes us, so our faith rises up and we walk out knowing victory is ours because Jesus already won the battle. So I don't know what you're facing today, but I want you to know that the whole book of Philippians is about pressing on. It's not about sitting waiting for change. It's about rising up, getting that cloak of contentment, letting that peace overwhelm you so your faith will move. And as your faith moves, you press on towards the mark of the high, high calling that Jesus has for you. And what he has for you is like nothing he has for anybody else because he makes it just for you. And he has his land and purposes for you so that you can be his child and succeed with whatever he gives you to do. Contentment is godliness. If we want to be God's children, we need to learn to walk in contentment. Yeah, that verse, uh, 1 Timothy 6, 6, godliness with contentment is great gain. Say great gain. Great gain. Young people. Be content where you are now, knowing that God has more for you in the future. Don't get upset and looking and say, how can I ever, how can I ever, what? No, no. Have God's contentment on the inside. And know that he's at work already preparing a future, a good one for you. Got a job for you. Don't be worried about it all. But just do your best where you are. And as you do your best, God will open the doors of opportunity for you. That's the way he works. So success is not about our circumstances around us. Look at that next verse, verse 13. How, how many know what Philippians 4, 13 says? I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Say it together. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. You can say it at home as well. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. So when you consider that, many people take that right out of context and just drop it into any area of life and say, I can do all things. And they think they can walk on water. And they can drive faster than they're supposed to. They can get from A to B supernaturally. You know, they can do things differently. But the, the, again, the context of this is the verse before. And the verse before says, uh, I know how to live on almost nothing, or with everything. I've learned to, the secret of living in every situation, whether it, it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for, because of, because of the way I've learned to live in contentment, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. You see, when we 
have the peace of God on the inside. When we know Jesus personally, start off there. When we know Jesus personally, we know his care for us, his love for us, guess what? Then faith rises up that he is there with us regardless of the circumstances, the situation, regardless of what's going on around us, regardless of what other people are saying about us or labeling us, all those things, regardless of that, we know that we can have success because of Jesus. We know that all things are possible for us. Because of Jesus, there are no limitations except what we place on ourselves. And so this is exciting to me because it allows us to be able to take a step into God's future for us. I feel God speaking that he wants to, some of you to go into business for yourself. And he wants to bless those businesses. He wants to, to see your faith that as you stand on it, that I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength, that you do it in the power, in the anointing, in the direction, listen, the direction, the one, the direction of the Holy Spirit to do it. For we don't try to figure it out by ourselves. But we allow the Holy Spirit to direct us step by step. And as we do that, then this verse just comes right into play. Because Paul did not go and, and go someplace where, he, where there was not food intentionally. He was led by the Spirit in the places where he went. And when he was there, sometimes it was a difficult place. Sometimes there was shipwrecks. Sometimes there was other hazards where he was beaten and many things happened in his life. But he was led by the Spirit all along the way. In fact, he heard the Spirit say, no, don't go there. So then he wanted to go, so, okay, so then I'll try here. No, no, don't go there either. See, sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, no, no, don't do that now. It doesn't mean forever, but don't do that now. Instead, do this. And when we listen to the Lord and don't lean on our own understanding, but we trust in Him, we, we do what He says, then we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. Because as He leads us, He strengthens us in what He knows we're going to run into. Because nothing is hidden from Him. And so don't be distressed if you start something and it does not seem to be excelling the way you want. Instead, listen to the Lord. Be faithful in all that you do. Honor Him. Bless Him. Never stop giving. Continue to honor God with all that you have. And as you do, He'll take you on the path needed to get to the success He has waiting for you. God's on your side, my friend. So when you consider these verses that we sometimes take out of context, they are real verses, that they are real promises. Let's put it that way. They are promises that God gives us. That we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. We can't, we can't do all things. We can't fly except with an aircraft. We, we can't stay underwater a long time unless we have air down there. So there's things naturally we can't do. But we can do all things that God leads us to do with his strength and his anointing and his power in our lives. So never, don't be limited by what man would say or what society would speak to you. But step out in faith and do what God is em embracing you to do and encouraging you to do. And as you do that, my friends, all things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible to you as you believe. And nothing is impossible for you. Because nothing is impossible with Almighty God. Amen. Amen. So he's helping us, encouraging us. And then when others catch themselves in their own limitations. Doesn't matter what it is. When you catch yourself feeling limited, Sabrina, if you catch yourself feeling limited, guess what? Come back here and say, I really can do all things because of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And as we learn to do all things through Jesus, we also learn that God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. It's not a verse. Some people, they get themselves in a mess and then they say, oh, God's going to supply all my needs. 
But you see, as we walk in contentment, as we learn to trust God, as we walk in faith, then God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory because he's a generous God. He's a God that gives and gives and gives. You can never outgive God. No matter what you do, he will always bless you. He is a God of abundant blessing. And he wants us to walk in that blessing so that we can be everything he desires for us to be. But many times we stop the blessing of God and we don't even realize it. We think we're being humble, but really we're being proud. Sometimes somebody will try to give you something and you'll say, oh no, I don't need that. You see, we think we're being humble, but really that's pride. We're stopping the blessing of God from coming our way. God will use people to bless us. But he wants us as his people to have his heart of generosity. He wants us to be generous with whatever we have. And sometimes we look and we say we don't have much. I'm so thankful for the mother I had because she helped me to understand what it really meant. I've told you the story some of you have heard of my blue velvet dress when I was 13 years old. I prayed and prayed for a blue velvet dress. And my mother kept saying they were too expensive. But finally, I got the blue velvet dress. I was 13, and I was so happy. I came home from school, and my blue velvet dress was hanging on the drape rod in the living room. And mommy said, sit down, let's have tea. And I, you know, tea with my mother was very normal. But the blue velvet dress in the living room was very unnormal in my house. And I sat there, mummy's talking, and she's telling me how the family in the church, how they had this fire last night, and they lost absolutely everything. And out my eye, I'm eyeing the dress the whole time. And then mummy says, what do you think you can give them? My dress is hanging there. They had a girl the same size as me. And I said, well, I've, I've probably got some things in my room we could give them. And mommy said, what would you like someone to give you? And I'm looking at the dress, and I'm starting to figure out the message. She said, would you like somebody to give you something they have that they don't really care about? Or would you rather ha let someone give you something that was really special to them? So I said, I guess I'd really like what's special to them because then it would be special for me. But see, this dress was brand new. I didn't want to let go of it. I had prayed for that dress and God gave it to me. It was mine. And then mommy said to me, you know, if you gave her the dress, I can't get you another one. And then my heart just sank. Because if I let go of it, I don't know if I'll get another one. But as I sat there, all I could think of was that little girl that had nothing. And I had a closet full of clothes. And maybe they weren't all special, but I still had a closet full of clothes, most of which I had picked. So I learned to give the dress. It was a very hard lesson for me. And you know, I never did get another blue velvet dress till 20 years later. 20 years later, we were living in Cold Lake, Alberta. And so, maybe it was more than 20 years. Somebody came to me and said, we'd like you to go visit the owner of this store. We think you can help her. So I went to the store. It was in another community. I drove to, to Bonneville. I went into the store, and the lady said, oh, we've been waiting for you to come. She went in the back, and she came out, and she was carrying a blue velvet dress. 
I started to cry and the woman's looking at me like, you're crazy? What's wrong with you? Because see, she didn't know my story. She didn't know what was happening in my heart. And that day I started to understand the generosity of our God to us. And when we open our heart with what's good for us and we give it to others, God comes and blesses us. He moves. Paul understood the secret. He understood that God will supply all our needs, but he will also bless us. He will give you what you like right down to the color you like. He knows everything about you. And he will see you get it. Never think you have to be second best. Believe that you are God's child. And as contentment grows in your heart, young people, as you get content in your heart, as you learn to trust God and believe he is the God he says he is, his faith will rise up in you. And he will give you a job. He will give you a good job, a place where you can thrive. He will give you the things, the desires of your heart. But don't look for the things. Look to honor God first. Look to be his child and say, thank you, Jesus. I gave that dress, and when I gave that dress, I left it, and I walked away. It was no longer my dress. It was now her dress. It wasn't mine any longer. I had to release it. But sometimes we gift things, and we want to hold on to them. We want to say how great we are. You know, I never told anybody for years and years about that dress. Because, you see, we need to let go of things and just leave it with God and then trust him for whatever comes. He is a faithful God. Paul learned the secret of being content, but knowing that God would supply his needs. It doesn't matter what those needs are. God will supply them. He may supply them by giving you a second job. He may supply them by opening a door where you can do something. Or he may just supernaturally surprise you through someone else. But he will always meet your need. He will always make sure. You know, there was a time where our, our business wasn't doing good. And the government was looking into things. Because some, a guy that had worked for us had claimed something that was illegal. And they, so they were looking. And they locked all our accounts. And we ran out of cash. And I was running out of food. And I had three boys that liked to eat a lot every day. And I went through the pockets, you know, and the coats and everything. And I collected $20. And I went to the store and I bought lunch things because they had to go to school every day. And I didn't want them going without lunch. So I bought lunch and made their lunches. And you know, the only time in our whole life it's ever happened Every single day until our account was released, someone called us and invited us for dinner. Every single day, I'd get a phone call. I know this is short notice. Could you come for dinner? Yes, we can. <laughs> and every single day, we had better food than if I'd been cooking. <laughs> See, what I'm telling you is, God knows everything about you. When we learn to walk in contentment, not get all worried about what's going on. See, in the business, we knew we did everything right. We knew we weren't wrong. We just had to walk through the process. The process wasn't fun. But as we walked through, God took care of our need every single day. He cared for us with all we needed. He didn't give us all the meals ahead, he took care of us day by day as we trusted him. He is an amazing God, and he wants to care for you. He wants us to open our hearts and be more generous than we ever have. Many of you here are generous people, but God wants us to be even more generous. He wants us to continue to walk in his life as we press on toward the mark of his high calling. I still remember that. 
you know, there's landmarks in your life when God works in different ways. The Bible here is significant because this church in Philippi continue to give. That's what these verses say prior to verse 19. It says, you've done well to share with me in my present difficulty. As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on to Macedonia. No other church did this. Even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. I I don't say this because I want a gift from you. So he wasn't saying it to get from them. He was saying it, he said, rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. This is our heart. This is God's heart for you. This is, this is, I didn't plan that we would be giving this message when we're in the midst of this time. But I believe that it's a message for us to understand. That as we continue as a church to be generous, as we join our faith together with, with everyone, everyone being involved and, and using our faith together, that God's blessing will continue to be upon us as a church through the years and years ahead. That we can boldly say, what? We can boldly say, our God shall supply all your needs. According to what? His riches in glory. Because as we give, those riches are stored up. And now as we walk in obedience to him, they're poured out upon us. So I, I just am so excited about what God is doing here. And how he wants to bless you and how he wants to bless us together. Can we pray? Father, thank you so much for the privilege of your word, for it being deep down inside our hearts, Lord, for you helping us with the word of God that is rich within us, strengthening us day by day. I thank you, Lord, that we truly can do all things through you, through Christ, who gives us the strength, and Lord, that you want to continue to bless us. So Lord, help us as a church to be a blessing to those around us, to reach out to those in need. Lord, to release what you put in our hands to be a blessing to others. Lord, help my friends here to be able to receive the Word of God richly inside their heart, to be able to live it out on a day-to-day basis that you say, well done, well done, well done. And Lord, I pray that many would be blessed through us. So I pray for each one at home now. I pray, Lord, for your presence in their houses, in their homes. I pray, Lord, for you to speak clearly to them. Let that heart of generosity rise up with the little ones, all the way through those growing up, all the way through to the the ones that have lots of experience in life, Lord. Let your generosity be our quality of life that we're at peace with ourselves, at peace with you in great contentment, looking forward to you using us to touch others. So bless them, each and every one at home, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. I trust that the Word of God impacted your heart just the way it did mine. Remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can do that right now. And then tell a friend so they can join us and be online with us each week. If you'd like to help us be able to continue this ministry around the world, you can do so by clicking the link below. And I believe God's going to bless you as you bless many others. Have a great week. God bless you.